Introduction to Power Flow Analysis 2.5 Methods based on Newton Repson To deal with the shortcomings mentioned in the previous video, there are some methods that simplify the Newton Repson method to make it more efficient. The fast decoupled power flow method, FDPF, and the direct current power flow method, DCPF, are the most common examples of which. In FDPF, we take the limit theta approaching 0 and 5 approaching minus pi over 2. In such case, both partial p over partial u and partial q over partial theta approach 0. In the meantime, partial pi over partial theta k approaches y bar i k u i u k minus delta i k summation l from 0 to n y bar i l u i u l, while partial q i over partial u k approaches y bar i k u i plus delta i k summation l from 0 to n y bar i l u l. How does this improve from the original Newton Repson method? Well, in the Newton Repson method, we need to solve a linear system with a 2n times 2n matrix for each iteration. Meanwhile, in FDPF, we only need to solve two linear systems with an n by n matrix for each iteration. Because solving a linear system with n equations has a complexity of order n to the cube power, dividing the problem into smaller approximated subproblems can increase the computational speed. For DCPF, we take a step further and assume that all the voltage magnitude approach 1. Then, partial pi over partial theta k approaches y bar i k minus delta i k summation l from 0 to n y bar i l, while partial q i over partial u k approaches y bar i k plus delta i k summation l from 0 to n y bar i l. Due to one of the properties of node admittance matrix y e q, that is, the row sum is 0, we have partial p i partial theta k and partial qi partial uk both approaches y bar ik. So in DCPF, not only is the complexity of the linear system reduced for each iteration, the matrix of the linear system is the same throughout the iterations. So when are FDPF and DCPF justified? Firstly, the limit phi approaches minus pi over 2 implies that power lines considered are mainly inductive and the resistant value is very small. Secondly, the limit theta approaches 0 implies that real power drawn or injected at the nodes are very small. And lastly, the limit u approaches 1 implies that the reactive power drawn or injected at the nodes are also very small. So, FDPF and DCPF are justified when we are modeling the high voltage lines of the transmission network, so the resistance will be very small. And also when we are modeling the normal operational condition with large safety margins so that the real and reactive power are small compared with the allowed value.